Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Prayer Problems Podcast, a podcast about real problems that real people face when it comes to prayer and growing in our prayer lives with God. Um, This season, season two, is about the book of Matthew, prayer in the book of Matthew, and lessons we can learn. We are talking about the substance of prayer, the content of our prayers, our approach to prayer. We are going to find all that out in the book of Matthew together. Today's problem, big problem, how do we pray for our enemies, okay? Have you ever had something or someone in your life that just was that they they just get you okay and then you read the bible and jesus says to pray for those who persecute you love your enemies what how am i supposed to pray for my enemies well we're going to talk about it today and um i promise you this if you can learn to pray for your enemies your life will be changed forever it's going to change your heart it's going to change your mind it's going to change your life and it's going to make you a much more like jesus all right Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we have together. Lord God, I ask in this critical, important area, challenging area, Lord, that you would help us. God, we cannot love our enemies, pray for our enemies without your help, without your love. God, we thank you that you loved us so much. Even when we were your enemy in sin, you loved us. You died for us. And so, Lord God, I just ask that you would help each and every one of us to get your heart and to learn to pray for those we would rather not pray for. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so how do I pray for my enemies? Let's just go to the scripture to start, and then we will talk about it. It's found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. We're going to read verse 43 through 45. Okay. Okay. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your father in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. I'm going to keep reading. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Don't even tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what are you doing out of the ordinary? Don't even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. All right, it's okay to go, all right, that gulp, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh boy, be perfect. Well, that word, just just real quick, we're going to... um. We're going to get back to the love your enemy, but that word perfect is uh, comes from the root telos, which it's talking about mature, complete. It's not saying that you never make a mistake. It, it means that you're growing, that you're becoming complete, and to become complete is to become like Christ, to become like God. He's the perfect example, and so um, he's calling us to be like him. Does God love his enemies? Yeah, he gave his son to die for them. We were his enemies. He died for us. He gave everything for us. He um, didn't just say, hey, I love my enemies. He showed that he loved his enemies by sending his son, by giving everything. And Jesus gave up his life for us. Man, it's uh, it's pretty good to be a a child of God. Amen? Um, But this is really interesting. Jesus' first teaching on prayer, okay, is about prayer. Praying and loving your enemies, praying for, loving your enemies, praying for those who persecute you, praying for those, okay, so a persecutor, I want you to think about this, somebody that's persecuting you is actively harming you, okay, they're actively harming you, they're actively impacting your life in a negative way, they're actively against you, I'm not talking about rivalries, Okay, if you're an Eagles fan, you have a rivalry with the Dallas Cowboys, okay, with Cowboys fans, with Dallas fans. Now, you're probably not persecuting them, 
Okay. <laughs> now, now Jared's behind the camera here and he just, he just went, well, maybe, you know, maybe, but, but you, I hope you see the difference, right? Like, like, like you're, you're not actively out, like trying to harm <laughs> Dallas fans. You're trash talking them. You're like, you're like, yeah, man, you guys think we're the best, you know, your rivals, but to persecute someone is to actively harm, is to actively oppress, is to actively diminish, destroy, hurt, okay? And so Jesus says, not just rivalries, not just like, ah, they don't like me, you know, whatever, not a big deal. The people that are causing you the most harm in your life, pray for them. What? And this is something we always have to remember. And he says, pray for them. He does not say pray against them. Okay. There is a big difference. When you love your enemies, even those who persecute you, those who harm you, those who hurt you, when you love them, you are wishing their good. Even in the midst of their wickedness, their evil, their their hate towards you, whatever it is, even in the midst of all that, I'm wishing good on you, that that you would be blessed, that God would help you, that that God w- would bless your life, that God would turn things around, that, that God would touch your life, that God would bring peace and reconciliation between us, that God would help you, would bless your family, would bless your marriage, would bless your finances, would bless your job and your career. Do you see what I'm talking about? I've seen so many times, so many times, people do not understand this whole pray for thing. I've seen so many times where people just jump to pray against, okay? Lord, I pray that you would, you know, frustrate them. <laughs> Just frustrate everybody. Frustrate them, frustrate them. You know, and there are plans and uh, plans and wicked plans and things that need to be, you know, frustrated and taken care of, but that's the plan, not the person. And and doesn't Paul say that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities of darkness, yada yada xyz. Okay? You can you can pray against the plan, but don't pray against the person. God loves that person. He died for that person just as much as he died for you. And so God calls us, Jesus teaches us, pray for your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. Man, that's tough. That's hard. That's challenging. You know, Jesus did it. Jesus is our example. Jesus prayed for his enemies. He blessed his enemies on the cross. He prayed to the Father. He's hanging there, bleeding, dying, bloody, bruised, disfigured. He was persecuted. He was hated. He was abused. He was spit on. He was mocked. You know, you can't, I can't imagine ever experiencing something worse than what he went through. And he's on the cross in the midst of it. It wasn't like, you know, It was after the resurrection, and he said, Father, forgive these people, for they didn't know what they did. (laughs) He's on the cross in the midst of the pain, the persecution. He's taking the full brunt uh, of the enemy's hatred, and he prays to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What? We need that kind of love. We need to learn to pray those kinds of prayers You know, I would bet that our lives have enough craziness, challenges, obstacles, and people that are just um, causing damage, doing damage, that we could have a pretty deep prayer life just praying for enemies. (laughs) And the world is crazy enough that we could fill up our intercessory prayer by praying for enemies. It's easy to pray against. It's harder to pray for others in the midst of their persecution, their hate towards you. But when you pray for others, for enemies, for those who persecute us, you are like Jesus. You're acting like Jesus. You're loving. Remember again, we we were enemies with God But God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That while we were yet sinners, Romans 5, 8 says, 
Christ died for us. God showed his love. Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to say sorry to begin working on our behalf, to begin helping us, blessing us, praying for us. He didn't wait for us to say sorry. He said, no, I love you, and I'm going to make the first move. I'm going to help you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to send my son. I'm going to give everything for you. Jesus calls us to do the same through prayer, to pray for those who persecute us, to pray for our enemies, to wish good upon them, to wish good upon them. Who else does that? You know what I mean? Like sometimes we wonder like, man, what, what makes Christianity different? What makes following Jesus so special, so important? Our Messiah, our Lord says, teaches us, Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for the enemies. Don't listen to the media and the hype and all the, all the junk in politics and in the news. There's a lot of nasty, nasty Christians out there that don't understand Jesus at all. But my Bible still says, Jesus still says, pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies, even when it hurts, even when it's hard, even when you don't want to, even when you're still in the midst of it, he says, pray for those who persecute you. Pray for your enemies. And I know it's hard, but that's why we have to ask God for help. And like I said before, if we can learn to pray for our enemies, it's actually gonna change us in the process. It's gonna fill our hearts with love, remove the hate in our hearts, remove the pride and bitterness in our hearts that, that oh, I need to get even, I, don't, I deserve better than this. All that stuff melts away when you start praying and blessing and, and wishing good upon those who hurt you. When it's hard to do it, we need to ask Jesus for help and he will help us pray. Amen. So, I want to encourage you to do two things. I'm going to pray in closing, but two things that, that you can do to apply this to your life. Number one is um, pray and ask God for help to love your enemies. You know, what, you know what? Back it up. Back it up. Switch. Flip flop. Number one, who's your enemy? Who's your enemy? Who's your biggest enemy in your life right now? It may be somebody close to you. It may be somebody, um, somebody halfway around the world. It may be a group of people that you really don't like, okay? Who's your biggest enemy? Get them in your mind. Get frustrated. Get real angry right now, okay? Be angry. Don't sin, okay? Get real frustrated, all right? Now you're frustrated. Now I want you to ask God for help to love them, to pray and bless them. I want you to ask God to give you his heart for them, to give you his eyes for them, to give you um, his posture towards them, to love them, to pray for them, to bless them, okay? That's it. Who are you, who, who, who's your enemy? Ask God for help, to love them, to pray for them, amen? So let's pray. I'm gonna pray and we'll close this out. So Father, we just thank you, Lord, that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet enemies of you, you loved us so much you sent your son that you were working on our behalf to help us, that Jesus on the cross, you said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. You prayed and blessed those who hurt you. Help us to be the same kind of people. Change our hearts. Holy Spirit, fill us with the fruit of the Spirit. Fill us with love, with love, Lord God, for others with patience, Lord God, long-suffering, even in the midst, Lord God. Help us to be kind and compassionate towards people that are not, and help us to be like Christ. Help us to love and bless and pray for our enemies, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, 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 thank you for joining us on the Prayer Problems Podcast. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. We're going to have a new episode soon. Um, and if you need more resources, you can go to victoryaog.org slash prayer. Amen. Well, God bless you. And we will see you next time on the Prayer Problems Podcast. Peace out.